Doug Israel on Saturday said it was on a war footing. Now it's put that, made it official. It is official policy. Yeah. And it's the cabinet that has made it official. You're right. Up until now, the the war talk has been rhetorical. That is, right after the Hamas attack, uh, everyone in the in the Israeli government was talking about war. Uh, was talking about in, in Netanyahu's case uh, a wreaking a mighty vengeance on Hamas, um, and 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 you knew that they were gearing up for some sort of operation. The cabinet has now given a formal green light uh, to Netanyahu to take decisions uh, regarding quote significant military activities that could could lead to war. So what the cabinet didn't do is the cabinet did it. It wasn't a declaration of war, but it, it, it confirmed that that essentially Israel is now on a war footing. What's going to happen next procedurally? Because right now this is all legal, right? They're dotting, they're crossing their T's and dotting their legal I's. Um, and under what's called Israel's basic law, Israel doesn't have a written constitution as a basic law. This was in conformity with that basic law. The next logical step is that um, when the Knesset meets, perhaps as early as tomorrow, uh, Netanyahu is expected to go before special committees in the Knesset, defense and foreign affairs, and then a full plenary session of the Israeli parliament in which he will formally declare war. So that will be sort of akin to what you see in the United States where the president goes before Congress and, and, and asks Congress to authorize, traditionally, historically, that's the way it's been done, uh, a declaration of war. Um, and at that point, uh, then you could definitely say Say that it's gone beyond rhetorical uh, to uh, to now getting into the logistical phase. And Netanyahu himself, I'll just note, has said that they're moving into the offensive phase right now. They're still uh, finishing up what they would say is that that initial phase of trying to flush out the the the, the militants on Israeli uh, soil. Does this mean we're going to see some kind of land invasion at some point? Yeah, not so fast. So what I mean is yes. More likely than not, um, it seems to be more and more inevitable, and you know it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. This this ground invasion by Israeli troops. Um, the the thing is, it does require preparation, obviously. And right now, you have a situation in Israel where, as we've been reporting, there is still many hot flashpoints of fierce engagements, uh, according to the uh, the Israeli uh, military defense forces. Uh, so they have not yet flushed out all of the Palestinian mil militants. Netanyahu has said that the majority of those who penetrated, uh, the who breached that uh, that that border into Israel uh, from Gaza, they have been either flushed out, killed, captured, uh, and whatnot. But there's some remaining. Also, you have the no small problem of the Hezbollah in the north firing, uh, you know, uh, rockets and and missiles uh, overnight at the the Sheba Farms, which is a disputed uh, position at, at Israeli military positions in that disputed area, which is really on the border between Syria and uh, and Israel. And uh, so that needs to be sort of clarified a little bit more. There's a lot of, right now, there's the reports that residents in the northern area, some of them are being preparing to be asked to evacuate as well, um, in addition to the ones in, in, in the south. Uh, and then there's the calling up the military reservists. You need manpower for a war. And Netanyahu has become, has, has indicated he's going to call up the reservists. It has to be done. So there is a lag time, inevitably, between uh, what seems to be more and more, with each passing hour, an impending ground operation. But uh, is it a matter of hours? days, more likely days.